Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Once again, managed to get up here for a couple of hours, and uh, of course, the world in the background is uh, a little mix up. Uh, and the main jobs this week really is to get the strawberries sorted out. Loads of comments online, loads of comments about getting your strawberries ready. You know, I had a lot of mine outside on the bench. Uh, all the runners and the cuttings that I've taken, I'm going to get them all potted up. And I'll be doing that this afternoon. But the first thing is to get the, get the mix made up. And in the mixer, what I've got in here is a full bag of multi purpose compost. For a half a bag, and I'll just show you it before I pop it in the mixer. For a half a bag of our own compost now, this is just straight out of the, out the compost bins. It's absolutely beautiful, black gold we call it. Absolutely fantastic. Now all, all we've had done with that is uh, Roger's put it through a, a heavy sieve, just an old bread basket, just takes all the bits of stick out, and any heavy um, debris that hasn't got it down yet. But uh, that's half a bag of this, and that goes there. I've just finished putting it. So with the Senga Gigant, I'm going to bring six inside, and I'm going to keep six outside. If you want to fruit your, your strawberries early, by all means, but don't bring them in yet. It's far too early. I'll leave mine out. They've got to have a good frosting. Your strawberries have got to have really zero temperatures to break a dormancy and to set up their new fruit buds for next year. So you do what you, the last thing you want to be doing is bring them inside now. Leave them outside. I'll pop mine up into here. I'll do that this afternoon, and they'll go outside on the back bench, uh, which it's open to the elements. It's a bit damp, um, we've got a bit net on the sides and that, but it's up a height, it's open. So any frost, snow, anything that's going to come down, the plants will get a bit damaged through the winter, just the top leaves and whatnot, but you can do without that, because next year, once you bring them in, as long as your crowns are sitting on the top, I'll show you that when I start putting them up, as long as your crowns are nicely on the top, and then you get some lovely big nice fruit buds for next year. Bring them inside. Now I've, I haven't got me me main crop strawberries yet. I'm still waiting for them. Um, I sent away for for four dozen Albion um, to King Seeds, and they should be coming this month, October. Now they'll just be bare rooted. But what they'll do, they'll go into the baskets, and I'll do a, a separate video on them in a couple of weeks' time uh, once it once it turn up. But it'll be exactly the same mix as what this is. Be nothing different. The difference being with me baskets, I'll put a liner inside and they'll hang up in the bottom polytunnel but once again they'll be outside until January and February even then they'll get a good frosting but I'll explain all that when I do the baskets and how, how we'll bring them inside at the beginning of next year so as I say I've got the mix made up now I'm over the moon with that 
I can get cracking on the potting off. Now, uh, as I say, there's been loads of comments on the on the strawberries. If you're planning on planting outside, now's the time to do it. If you've got a nice runner, if you've been following it through the year, if you're taking your runners, and you've got a nice runner, tip it out the pot, if it's got a nice root on it, well, get, it in the, get it in the ground. Don't forget to give them a good bit of spacing. If you're planting them in a bed, the reason I don't plant mine in beds is because that bed's going to be taken up for two, three, four years. I always like to grow mine in pots or grow mine in baskets. That way I can change them around every year. Um, I can have two different sizes, two different kinds of pots, a small pot and a large pot for the three year ones. The first year ones will go in the baskets, then they'll coat the baskets and go in the second year and the third year. So I'm never taking up any land outside. Um, I've plenty of shelving in the greenhouses, as you've seen over the years how we do it. But uh, this is a mix that's, that's out the road now, so I'm over the moon. We've got some garlics to plant this afternoon. I'll show you how we'll come on with the garlics. And of course, what I did do yesterday, after the gills, if you remember, I was on about the uh, taking sunflowers down, but just as well I did because one of them had snapped. And I managed to save two. This has been so far bent over that it's taking a load of moisture on the top of the head. And I'm hoping I can just dry it out. But this one's perfect. And of course these are the um, the seeds have got a thin hood. I've got three seeds of them. Um, I planted a thing with put some plants. One of them got blocked blue down about six weeks ago in the gills when we had that storm come over. But two survived and of course I've got this head here. Perfect. So what I'm going to do with him, I'm going to hang him up and he'll go in the metal house. He'll hang there for a good couple of weeks. Right until uh, it's nice and dry in there, nice and warm. And he'll hang there until about the uh, middle of next month, November. And then what I'll do is I'll strip him down and they're nice and dry. The tops are starting, the seedling heads are starting to come where they're now, so it shouldn't be much longer. And there's, of course, there's some beautiful seedling. Beautiful seedling underneath there. Fantastic. So there'll be loads of seed for people next year. If you want some giant sunflowers, I'll push that back in there so we waste not. What is left over, I'll get dry, as I see, I'll get dried out. All I need is a dust in the yellow sulfur and they'll go in the envelopes up. Last year I put them in the glass jars. Just made sure they're well dry though first if you put them in jars. Nice dry, put them in the jars, a bit of yellow sulfur, screw the top one and they're perfect. But uh, that's what will be happening with them. As uh, I see, I've got garlics to do. Now, what I have got to do is to make a garlic spray up. Um, I've got to take it down home though, because I can't do it in the, I can't do it in the flat. I've got enough pollockings a year ago after doing that, but um, here's the garlic bulbs. I think I ended up with about seven out of four, out of four dozen that didn't split, didn't they uh, segment. But that's just down and not being cold enough. I'll explain all that when I plant the garlics, as I say. Um, if you're planting outside, that's fine. I'll put the first ones in. But what I like to do, I like to put a few of the elephant garlic. I've got about 12 of them, 12 nice big forms, and I like to plant them inside. But as with the strawberries, they'll get potted up and they'll get shoved outside on the bench in all weathers. They'll get a really good frosting, and so it enables them to split and divide into the clumps that you know, um, instead of just having a bulb like that. I mean, you can still use that, but all I use them for is for crushing up, chopping up, and making the garlic spray up. I'm going down home first, make a garlic spray up, come back and I want them cabbages sprayed, and what I've got left, I'll put the strawberries up, then I'll get the strawberries a good spray with the, the garlic spray also. So that's, uh, that's three jobs all the way today. And of course I've got fire going the allotment, um, we're busy on with the shed, I've just put the floor down for the new part of the shed, so it's, we're trying to get as much as we can done before the, the weather really turns bad. We've only got another fortnight and we went to Blackberry Week, the school holidays, so that end of the time tells me that the nights are cutting right back in. I'll not get up much of an evening. Um, I'll get all my work done through the day and then I'll stop coming up in the evening because, as I say, there's not much to do up here. There'll be no heating on up here this year, there'll be no lighting, nothing. Um, what I'll do, I'll concentrate on the little greenhouse down home. I'll make for a little bit of heat on there uh, just to start some Spanish onions, which are coming next week. Uh, three of my sisters are going out to Spain. I've got a, um, Barcelona, I think it is, or um, one of them, and they'll bring us me Spanish onions back over. That's the only thing I'll go and make greenhouse this year. I'm not bothering with leeks. Uh, I'll have the dahlias, which I'm going to do in the next video. 
I've got the dahlias to do. I've just dug them up this morning, so I'm drying them out in the polytunnel. And so next week I'll do a video on the, on the dahlias, the croissants, and of course the old um, the sweet pea. And I'd like to sow mine any earlier in October, so that'll all be in the next video. And of course we've got the raspberries to tap up. Got loads to do, but there. Uh, People say it's a quiet time of the year. Don't think so. But as he has me mixed made up now, I'm well chuffed for that. I'll start sorting through my pots, get my pots ready, and we'll get these strawberries potted up. I'll, uh, I'll show you how to go on with them. But as I say, if you're putting strawberries up for the inside, do not bring them inside yet. Pot them up and put them outside on the benches in a sheltered spot. Open to the weather, and they'll, they'll thank you for it. So what a nice, good freezing time before they set them buds for next year. But there, uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, I'll sort some pots out and we'll get cut and pot these strawberries, okay? Right, well, welcome back to the pot, everybody. As you can see, I'm, uh, I'm keeping the distance from the house today. Um, I noticed John Murphy had his uh, brew on the board yesterday. A very brave man, John, for doing it in the house. As I mentioned, I've done it last year inside the house and I, I stunk the entire flat out for about three to four days, so rather than uh, risk another bargain for days on end, I've got myself a little hot plate of eBay, 12 quid, cheap as chips, and now I can bring it downstairs, plug it in the garage, and what I've got on, I've got my old pan that I use for doing most of my brews in, I've brought my rhubarb down in here, rhubarb leaves for spraying, and of course today I'm doing the garlic. Now as I mentioned, uh, when you're doing your garlic, if you do get bulbs up there that don't split, that don't segment, uh, usually don't, uh, don't not having much cold or not enough cold, cold weather, you'll end up with just an ordinary flat bulb. Now, you, can, you can use them in cooking just the same, it just means that when you're opening the bulb up you're going to be using the whole bulb. Um, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't suggest leaving half pieces of garlic lying around, um, same as onions, I never put onions in the fridge, use an half, I, I use the whole thing. It's the same with garlic. Um, but what I like to do with these, I like to chop them up, no knife. My friend, that's pretty tough. I cut them into segments. Then what I've got in here, I've got two pints of water, fresh water, and I've got three cloves in it. You can see by the skins are as some of the skins are as tough as old boots. And I've got three garlics in there, and the only thing I need is my jar for my juice. As I say, I've got about two pints of water in there. Now I like to bring it to a, a real good boil once it gets boiling. Um, you can usually take a... It's just starting to come to the boil there now. Take an old bit of stick. I never use any utensils. Not for garlic, because it, it always leaves that there better taste on them. So I just use an old piece of timber and just keep stirring them around until I get nice and soft. Which usually takes around about the 20 minute mark really soft and I'm going to lift the pan off there onto the bench and use a piece of wood as a masher really mash up garlic cloves down nice and, nice and soft so it really gets into the juice into the water put them back in the boil again just simmer them for another few minutes till they get really nice and soft and as I say jar, jug, puppet, anything you want and of course don't forget your muslin cloth just no piece of muslin um, you can buy them cheap enough in the, uh, in the DIY stores and this is what I use. I mean, I, I, I've used this for for a couple of years now, and I just keep washing it out and washing it out. And all I do is I put it over the jar, and then strain that into there, and you'll get a lovely juice. Now I look, I tend to look for a pint. If I've got two pints of water, like them, I boil it down, mash the juice, and pour it there. Once it's cooled, let it cool off first. Don't try doing it when it's boiling hot, otherwise you could end up scalding yourself. Just let it cool down and then strain it off into there then you can fold your muslin up around whatever garlic you have left in there and really squeeze it get a really good squeezing and you get all that juice out and you should have a you should be we used to don't about a good pint of their uh, garlic juice now once again I'll strain it again put it back through the cloth again strain it into that container so it's nice and smooth there's no bits and pieces of there uh, garlic left in it because the last thing you want to do is to block your sprayer up with uh, bits of garlic skin and uh, fibre. So I'll give it another strainer and what I like to do with that is take it up in my big sprayer 
use your two or three litre, no problem, take all that in and add a good dollop or a couple of good dollops of washing up the wood to that my good, get a good mix up and then I'll be going this afternoon or tomorrow morning, uh, depending on the weather, at the moment it's uh, it's overcast again, we've just had a break uh, for about half an hour from the rain, it's rained all night, poured down all night so I thought this morning I'd get out here and get cracking on this, get the garlic juice made first and then if we do get a break in the weather, I'll pop this afternoon, I'll get the cabbages a good spray and all the new uh, spring cabbage I'll plant in the bottom polytunnel, get them a really good spray all around them, good soaking and that'll keep any slugs or snails off them. It's, uh, it's not a killer, all this is is a, is a deterrent, the, the, garlic, the garlic spray, it's with, as with any plants. Where you will get the help from, the help from is uh, when you add the, the soapy water, uh, the soapy liquid. When you're spraying the next like, green fly and white fly, that soap gets on their, uh, on their gills and on their nostrils and they'll choke. Um, so that's one good thing. But the, as I say, the garlic juice won't harm them. It'll just really leave a bit of taste in the mouth. It'll stop them from eating your, eating your plants. And that's the whole idea of, uh, of using um, organic sprays. But uh, as I say, this is a... Uh, this is just starting to boil away nicely there, so I'm going to leave it now. I've turned it down, and of course I can feel the piece of garlic that I've chopped up are getting nice and soft there. I'm starting to, uh, starting to work down really nice. I'm pleased with that. I'm going to let that go for another, another 20 minutes, and I'll give them a crushing up, as I say, and then strain everything off. Of course, don't forget a big strainer. I'll put the... Uh, what I can do is I can put the the cloth inside the strainer and sit that on top of there and it works just the same, it's a double strainer that and it just gets all that juice out and all that fibre and you should have be left with a nice big jug of just clear liquid rank, and I mean rank with garlics, garlic smell and uh, that will hopefully put any bugs off your plants but as I say, once it finishes off, I'll strain it off and we'll get up the plot and I'll get them uh, cabbages a good spray and then we can get cracking on the strawberries. Um, I've got the strawberries sitting up outside in the rain, getting a good soaking. What I'll do, I'll pop them up in that bucket and then I'll go back on the shelves again, under cover. And we'll just water as need be. But they're outside, they're in the fresh air and all are cold and that's what they need. And they're going to sit there right until January, February, till we decide which ones we're going to bring inside. But uh, for the time being, I'm just going to put on this garlic, just keep stirring it, and stirring it until our... Uh, until it closed are nice and soft and mashy and then we'll strain it off into there and we'll get myself a, a good bottle of, of juice I'll take it out of the garden we'll put it in the spray, put some soapy liquid in it and uh, as I say, we'll get a a good spray and hopefully that'll deter any slugs and snails off them until I get myself uh, a gold hold in the ground ok, so I'm going to knock off now and as I say, if we, if we get a break in the weather I'm going to uh, pop up the pot We'll get the spring done and we'll also start in the strawberries while we're up here. Okay, I'll see you again soon. Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Another uh, cracking day up here in the northeast. I think we've been there uh, about the only part of the country that uh, there hasn't gotten any rain today, but uh, we've been pretty lucky. It's uh, been really gusty though, very strong winds. And of course, a little bit of sunshine with there. Perfect. Perfect for me anyway for the jobs I've got to do, uh, do this evening. And of course, uh, as I explained in the earlier part, our, uh, I've got the garlic boiled down. And of course, I still got a bottle when I got inside because, of course, the smell of my clothes. And as soon as I will last smell it, get them clothes off. They're absolutely stinking with garlic up there. I brought it up the night, I made a pint up, I had a pint left after I drained it off, strained it off, let it cool, squashed it all, got all that juice out, and a three litre spray, that's what I did. It was just over a pint, I put it all into this and topped it up with just some nice fresh water, just warm water, and of course don't forget the washing up liquid, a good, couple of good dogs through that, and of course, and it's an easy job, go around, and all I need is a, I don't put on a fine spray, I put on a heavy spray, because all I want to do is spray a bit of this juice down on the ground and around the plants and of course that's going to keep all them slugs and snails away and actually now I can smell it now, it's, uh, it's as strong as anything um, so that's going to do the job great it's got a little bit of soapy water so it's going to 
it's going to stick to the leaves and that the smell is going to stop there for quite a while. As they say, it will not be watering overhead. We'll switch your weepy hoses on so they can just drip away and water the roots. Yeah, the tops of the plants will stop dry. Not like outside if it was rain that would wash it, wash it straight off. So there's another good thing about growing your cabbages inside. But uh, as I say, this bed's finished now. Uh, I've got the first row and I've just come along and finished the last two rows in. So we've got 60 uh, cabbage dunking in here now and I'm over the moon. But uh, I've got one last job to do this afternoon in this bottom tunnel before uh, I go in and start and put the strawberries up. And of course it's uh, it's another stinky job, but uh, I'll just uh, point you in the right direction. And of course now that when the, the lower poly tunnel and the cabbages are in, uh, I want to start prepping the feed again for midwinter. If they do start getting a little bit hungry, what I did this afternoon while the weather was fine, was one of my old tricks is to go out and get a bag full of nettles. There's still plenty of nettles out there, they're not stuck dying back till the end of this one. So I'll make it uh, I'll make a meat me job to get out as many things as I can through the meat and get at least a bag full. Straight into the tank, as you know, it's still warm enough. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get wrong again tonight because I can smell it already and it's going to be sticking to me clothes. I'll just make sure I don't splash my uh, me jacket because it's, uh, it's absolutely honking. Well, that's a nettle of the summer. So I'm going to leave that and I'm going to put the lid on. Woo. As I say, it's still, it's still nice and warm in these polytunnels. So we're still getting fermentation here yeah, with the nettles. Um, even through the winter, I find when I've been tipping the nettles in, and uh, the, the ferment down within a couple of weeks, and, uh, and of course all you got to do is come up and stir it, and you can smell it straight away. And they're fantastic for the cabbages. All I have to do is half fill a watering can with the juice, top it up with fresh water, and give them a little drink. Maybe it's once a week, and that just keeps them ticking over. A little bit of feeding it, a bit of nitrogen. It'd be absolutely marvellous. There's plenty of feed in the ground now, been well lined. The numbers there are fantastic there. When I did the probe, I did the readings. I'm quite happy with the soil, so all in all, they've got a spray, they've got a feed, and they've got a damn good soil, so we should get a first class cabbage off them. So we'll, we'll keep on there, showing you through the videos throughout the winter how they're getting on. As I say, both my doors are open, there's mesh on that bottom door there. So there's, there's fresh air blowing through all the time, and that's one of the main things if you're, if you're thinking about planting cabbages inside, is your airflow. You must have a good airflow. You don't want it to be too hot to you. It's just perfect in here. In fact, what I might do, I might uh, take one of these polythene saglings off and just leave the net on, so there's plenty of fresh air blowing through. I don't need any heat in here till next year, until at least until he's come out in May. End of April, beginning of May, when I'll start planting the main crop, BM tomatoes in here. That's fine for me. I've got plenty of other places I can put a half dozen early tomatoes, if I want, down home, uh, in the top greenhouse, or in the, in the top tunnel. I can put some early tomatoes in there, but this is going to be the main crop tomatoes for next year. So, I'll not be wanting this bed till at least the end of May. By then, the cabbages should be well clear. But, uh, that's them done anyway. I'm over the moon with that. I'll finish off spraying them later on. I'm going to pop in next door. And we're going to try and get a couple of these um, strawberries potted up. Okay. Okay. Right, here we are. I've had to take the jacket off because it's absolutely boiling here. And of course, this has been a top tunnel. We've got the sun in the west there, shining straight down on here. Lo and behold, 80 degrees. And it's now 5 o'clock in the afternoon up here in the northeast. That little bit of sunshine and it just lifts that temperature in the tunnels uh, to no end. So as I say, I think they have the doors open all day long. The fridge is up in the morning, you put the doors on the hook, and I'll come back in the evening, take them off and shut the doors. Even on, if I know it's going to be a nice evening, I'll just leave the door on the hook. A couple of inches, just let the fresh air through. There's not many plants in here now. A few odd tomatoes. Um, the grapevines are in there. The tunnel's just about empty. I've got these few marigolds and that's still to take out. I've got the peach tree at the top now, it's just grown out all out of proportion. That I've started fanning it out. So I think I might do a video on that in the next couple of weeks. I'll be cutting that back, ready for the winter. 
and uh, I might do a little video on that for the time being. And um, once again, that's uh, well, this is a pairing plant, so when I get shot of this straight away, this is uh, the Colossus. As I said in the early video, these are the ones I got off Dave's show. It was Dave's birthday yesterday, so I hope you got me uh, best wishes. There we are, it's an absolutely cracking plant. Nice big root system on it. So I want to put it up in a larger bucket, of course. Soil level, you don't want them too deep. You want the crown just sitting proud of the top, which is where I like to have it. And of course, it's an easy enough job just to go around and backfill it. Perfect. Just press, pressing that down, make sure that yeah. Yeah, mixing tree doesn't come off there. Yeah. I'm on a little bit of a, a rocky de recline here, standing on top of timbers. So that's the first one done. That's a colossus. Now that's a parent plant done. So he's going to go. He's going to sit straight outside there on the bench. No heat whatsoever. Just outside in all weathers. I'll put that to one side for the time being. And I'll get another bucket up because, uh, as I say, I've got the, um, I've got five runners I want to get shot of. And I noticed I've got one there, and lo and behold, he's got a little runner coming off. So that's one I do want, so I can take it off. I've got enough now. I'm just pull it, hopefully, pull him away. They go in the bottom. A little bit of working around, and uh, there we are. Absolutely first class plant. That's a lovely little runner. But don't forget to check this, make sure you've taken your, uh, your pins out. Because uh, I use little metal pins. And sometimes I, I forget them. If I don't use straws, I, I use little metal pins. So what you do want is to leave the metal pin in and find that rusts up over the winter. So that's that's okay, that's gone. When I'm cutting the runners away, sometimes I leave the little pins say, sticking in them. When you first put them, when you first put the, the pins in, uh, to press the, um, the runners down into the soil, but that's a uh, hat's free. Champion hat's all good. I've got my barra, good shovel full of uh, compost that we made up at the beginning of the video. Get that in. Yeah, it's an easy enough job just to pop that in, as I say. I always keep the crown just on the top, sitting on the top, so oh, that's perfect. That's a little bit. Spot on. There we are. And that's a nice big bucket. Now, as I say, I'm not sure how these are going to take to being forced. So, just to be on the safe side, I've never grew these before. Different varieties have different ways of growing. So, what I'm going to do with these, with the, the Colossus, I'm going to keep three outside and bring three inside. And I'm just going to see how they how they grow away. But as I say, they'll not be they'll not be brought inside till February, at least February, end of January, beginning of February. Uh, I'll be quite happy with them just sitting outside. They will die back with, with all the heavy winter rains and snow and whatnot. But uh, it's an easy easy enough job to bring them in. <coughs> in fact, what I will be doing with these, I'll get the garlic spray. I'll get them all potted up, sit them outside the bench, and I'll get them a good blast of garlic spray, and that'll keep any bugs or any that get into the leaves and eating the leaves. I know the leaves will die back, but if you if you're going to invite bugs into them, you get into the leaves and that and they're, they're harder to get shot of next year because if they start laying eggs and uh, whatnot, you're going to have all that in the greenhouse when you bring them in next year. So just make sure they're nice and clean outside. And of course when you bring them inside, they're going to be perfect. A lot of the leaves will die back, but see it's enough job just to pull them off in January, February and bring them inside, and of course your crowns that are sitting on the top there, you'll have your nice new buds, your new plant for next year, growing through. So I'll take you all through that next year, and we'll get cracked. Two of them, I've got another four of them to do, we can, uh, we can do them later. Um, I've still got a few more bulbs left, the garlic bulbs, I think I had about seven, that never segregated, um, never segmented. So. They'll go into the next garlic spray, they'll just get chopped up, and uh, as I say, nothing goes to waste. The garlic, if you remember, I put a load in, 
in the garden, just planted it uh, fist wide all the way along, nice, nice full row. And of course, I always like to see these big boys for the inside. Now, these are the elephant garlic. The size there, compared to the Isle of Wight. Absolutely monsters. So, what I like to do with these, um, what I like to do with the elephant garlic is to get a 6 inch pot, which is a size here, and it's really good sandy mixture. This, so I've half filled the pot, I've just done, just done half full, and then with the elephant garlic, just gently press it in. So it's about there. Just gently press it in so it's just sitting on the top there and then you can just cover that up up to the rim so it's got a, at least two inches of compost on the top. Now these are going to be sitting outside actually on that bench in all weathers so you want to frost them together at bulb. So as I say it's only going to a couple of inches of compost on the top there. If you want to try growing the garlic this way I've had some pretty good results from it. So that's the finish. It's got about two inches of compost on that, on that um, elephant garlic. But it's going to sit outside on the bench, all weathers, rain, frost, and that's why I always say you have a good sandy compost. You get too much rain, what you don't want is too much water at the bottom. You want free draining. And once you start rooting, which will be in a couple of weeks' time, and they'll send a nice big head up, by January, February, you should have three or four inches of green on the top there. And that'll grow away quite steady, but there'll be a, a substantial root system on the bottom. And then I can just bring them inside in February, set them out and plant them in the border. They've already had a good frosting, or I'm hoping to have, through December, January, even into February. And it really cold nights, give it a good frosting, and then you'll be able to bring it inside in your polytunnel, or wherever, plant it, and you should get a first class garlic nice and early. And of course, escaping the rust. Well, hopefully that's um, that's the whole idea of it, escaping the rust, and then you can feed it, water it. You've got full control of your weather inside the polytunnel, and uh, hopefully you should end up the first class of the garlic bulb. But I, I like to grow about a dozen of them, uh, a dozen elephant garlic, and I'll probably put a dozen of the solar and white in. I've got enough bulbs there to finish them off. Uh, rather than throw them, I'd rather put them in pots, Grow them outside on the benches and then just they're ready to go inside. So that's another job done. I'm there uh, slowly but surely getting there. I've got a load of prick enough to do down home. Yeah, the spring flowers. I've got them um, bellus daisy not to prick off. So I'll be getting them up the road over the next year or two. And then I've got all the fruit bushes up here to start on, uh, which I think is going to be in the next video. I'm going to start these raspberry bushes, get them tidied up, get them cut back. Yeah. The, the beds want a good manure around the roots. We, we always like to put a good bin full of manure on top of the roots, and then in the early spring next year, January, into, into February, all we do is we'll give a good sprinkling of there, sulfate of potash, and uh, that's it. That's all I'll get. Uh, and we'll get a first class crop of raspberries. But uh, when I cut them back the other month, I just give them a light tying up. But I've got to go through all the beds now. I've got to re tie them up, double tie them, top and bottom, and then cut the tops off because some of them are overhanging the tops of the frames. So I just like to cut them all at the same level all the way around and just keeps the, keeps the bed, the frames, all nice and tidy. So I think we'll do that in the next video. We'll get the um, we'll get the um, the raspberry beds done, we'll get them up, we'll get them cleaned up, get them tied in, and we'll also start on the outside spring cabbage. Um, now I've got the, I've got the spring cabbage sitting outside now on a bench and they're just a, a really nice size for planting out, so I think in a week's time we'll just clear that top bed, we'll get a couple of bins of muck on there, I'll lime it, I'll take a reading of that top bed again, see what it's like, see if I need to bring it up or bring it down, and then we'll put the uh, the outside spring cabbage in there, and they'll romp away. And of course I've got a, I've still got a row of Japanese onions to plant in the bottom polytunnel, which I should have done today, but um, I can get that done tomorrow. As I say, I'll, I'll plant one row in there, and uh, that'll be some early onions for. Right, so I hope I've been a little bit of help you again. That's um, that's another video done. We've, uh, as I say, we've been really busy the last few uh, last few weeks. 
Yeah, I know the weather's been uh, a bit hitty missy, but um, we've managed to get um, some work done outside when it's been a good day, and a lot of work inside when it's been a poor day. And that's the beauty of having your polytunnels, you know, you're in or you're out. Um, we're never held up, put it that way. Uh, if it is rain heavy, we can get up and work in the polytunnels. So always little jobs around here. I've got, them, um, I've got them sunflower heads that stripped down next week, so I'm just drying them out in the melon house for the time being. And I've got a million trees lying along this main bed here, which I need sorting out. I need to get this same. Um, I need to get this bed cleared out. There's loads of timber lying on it because the early potatoes are going to go in here next year. So ideally, I want to get some seaweed. I need seaweed for in here, and I need seaweed for the muck bins because I'm going to do a, a little video on how to, how to do our muck bins. As I say, we're starting to take them ones that were filled up at the beginning of this year. Absolutely marvellous. It's really it's black stuff and it's gorgeous. There's worms, beetles, and everything running around in it. The compass is alive, but uh, hey, that's what I want. But uh, there's nothing um, chemical or anything goes into it. It's all natural. And uh, the plants love it, and we love it. So, as I say, that's another video over with. So, I hope being some help you. Uh, keep on subscribing, because there's uh, quite a few coming online. Keep on sharing. And of course, keep on spraying. Get your sprays filled up, get them cabbages done, and uh, don't forget your um, don't forget your strawberries. If you're putting on your your runners like me, don't forget to give them a spray. And do not bring them inside, not yet anyway, it's far too early. Get them outside in the benches and leave them there for the winter. It'll do much more good that way because it helps our fruit bud set. And cold temperatures, that's what they need. <laughs> to break a dormancy and then set them up for next year and you'll get a first cast crop of strawberries. As I say, I'll finish these up this afternoon, put these up, and then uh, they'll be all ready for next year. Get me garlics finished here. See, I've got about three or four jobs to do this afternoon, and uh, time's already ticking on, so we're going to be losing the light soon in about half an hour to an hour. I don't want to be up here too late, so I'm going to finish up video now, and I'll see you all again on, this, uh, on the plot soon. Okay, bye for now.